We're getting back on track here with Catherine and Emily, but as you know, we won't stay there for long because this is the Going Off Track podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Going Off Track podcast. I'm Catherine, that's Emily, and here we are ready for the last race before the summer break. Yes, I can't believe it. We're already at spa. It's and we're finally getting wild. getting into like silly season, which is really just all of 2024. So all of season has been yeah. silly season this year, and it's just getting sillier, which we'll talk about in in a moment. Um, but I would also like to point out that if I look a little homeless, it's because I was sleeping on the ground for the last two nights and fending off our campsite from raccoons. So oh. it's it's been a lot. It sounds like so much fun. I miss camping. Very excited to go. Hopefully, when it all like isn't boiling hot in the u.s so yeah no it was it was very warm last night and we aren't even in a place that's like super warm but still it did not cool off as much as it would have been nice for it to cool off and so i was just in in my sleeping bag sweating trying to make sure that a raccoon wasn't going to come out from the bushes so i woke up in the middle of the night uh wednesday like early wednesday morning and there's a raccoon four feet away from me foraging under our table and i was like i don't like this but i was also the adult in the room so i had to deal with it (laughs) That's like in the Grand Canyon. I've been before camping, like in their main campsite, and they have just these massive elk, like walking around because they're yeah. they're just so used to humans. But they have like these huge racks of like um, horns, and they just like snap trees. And I woke up and I was like, "What is going on?" And there was one literally two feet from our tent, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I'm terrified. But yeah, anyways, for real. yes. Anyway, you're outdoors. somewhere you're somewhere different. You- I am. I am. I am in Denver currently. So as soon as I got home, my family was like, let's get together. So my brother lives in Denver. I'm here visiting him. So yeah, nice 6 a.m. flight to start the day. So Ooh. go team. I'm also an incredibly, you know, fallen victim of humidity because yes. that's the thing. My hair, like it is so big and I can't just tame it. I need to just cut it all off it's driving me insane but it's so full of secrets um well we have a ton of news to dive into we do unfortunately you know we still don't have an answer from carlos signs but we do have a contract update so as we've all kind of predicted we hinted last week with the rumors esteban akon has signed a multi-year deal with Haas. He will be replacing K-Mags and he will be joining Ali Behrman on the track for Haas next year thoughts i mean it's a good like it's it from from a an experience standpoint it's a good hire for haas it's just it's going to be really interesting to see how the relationship between bearman and akon ends up going because esteban akon is esteban akon um so will he be able to help mentor a rookie or is this gonna be a problem he is um, he is f1's worst teammate like honestly right, like right. he is not a good teammate he will not help foster and you know learn and teach the rookie i think this is going to be an absolute disaster this is my tw- early 2025 prediction haas's team dynamics are going to be god awful yeah, the, the only thing we can hope for is that they really qualify very far apart from one another, whether that, like, as far apart as possible, while also, like, not being detrimental to Ollie Behrman, who is very talented, and I think could really do a lot of good things in a Haas car, especially if you think about how the Haas has been the last few races, and if they continue on that trajectory. Um, but, yeah, I think it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be rough, and I think that Ayu Komatsu is going to have to throw it down a little bit more firmly than Akon's soon to be former employers. I don't know. I just think it's going to be bad. I really do. I can't wait yeah. to see it. The drama <laughs> will be there, but I just it's I just hate when rookies come in and they don't have a good teammate to help them and then they just, you know, crash Struggle. and burn. Not yeah. literally or maybe literally, but yes and. Yeah. Yes and. But with this <laughs> announcement, we now have 15 confirmed seats for next year, which means we only have five left. So we're down to William, Williams, Sauber, Mercedes, Alpine, and V-Carb. Yes. Right. Not including and, what may or may not happen at Red Bull. I was going to say, and potentially Red Bull. Um, but yeah, so all of these teams have allegedly reached out to Carlos Sainz about a seat. 
he still is, you know, well, now we have the Olympics, so that'll probably push off his, you know, de- decision making. Also, he came out and said he's not opposed to taking a gap year. No, no, no. Which... He said he's not going to take a gap year. Isn't that what he said? Oh, I Did thought he... he said. Hold oh, on. Hold maybe... on. I want to look. Let's confirm I... because I yeah. was like scrolling super quickly while I was like getting off the plane and maybe 100% chance that Emily I, th- I messed think this he up. said oh yeah he said no so he rules out taking a sabbatical oh, in 2025 okay, 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 yeah okay, so okay. he's ruling it out he said the quote at the press conference was absolutely not a sabbatical is not even in my head so hopefully that means he is thinking less about what the the Spanish tennis team is going to be doing at the Olympics <laughs> and more about what is happening in you know what what car he's going to drive in next year because I would like to know please god bless Carlos signs but yeah honestly as soon as he comes out I hope he comes out like he'll probably come out like the week after we return from the summer break that's what I'm thinking oh my God. No. I know we're, and we're gonna spend it all summer break just not knowing it'll be great um but speaking of things that are going to be happening like on the cusp of the shutdown is um, for Mercedes. Kimi Antonelli will be doing another test in one yep. of the older Mercedes cars um they they still don't know what they're doing yet either. There are a lot of rumors the last couple of days saying that he's going to be the guy to replace Lewis Hamilton. I still think that's a really bad decision. I still think that that Antonelli is not ready for Formula One. Agreed. Um, but he's going to do another test again. And I think it's it really depends on if Carlos is going to go with Mercedes or not. Again, I mean, I don't know how you don't go with Mercedes with those five options. Like, why yeah. would you ever drive for Alpine or Sauber? Williams, I could see like he's really buying in to build something, but that's still a stretch. And V Carb, V Carb's not an option. For no, him. I don't for, think for him. it is. I don't um, think but it and is. and also, I don't know necessarily how much Williams is either right now. It looks like Valtteri Bottas might be a candidate for that that seat. That's which I can see, which I think makes more sense than Carlos. Right, I I, I do too, especially because I I really think like that full court press was you know long enough ago that I really think that James Valls is looking to get an answer sooner than what Carlos is willing to to give. So that you know I I don't know necessarily just how much he is being currently considered for that seat. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it makes my skin crawl. Yeah, it makes me so anxious. But anyways, we'll see. Also, speaking of Alpine, um, it looks like they're going to be doing exactly what they did a year ago by firing their team principal right after the weekend is going to, you know, end. So, you know, this thing, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. (laughs) Alpine, I feel like they're saying is like everything is broke. We can't fix fix it. Like, we can't fix it. Let's just, like, they literally are throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. They've tried to restructure. They've brought in a new team principal. They've redone their, like, everything. They have new, like, owners, all this. And it's, like, nothing is working still. (laughs) And, like, they're changing a driver. And I still don't think anything's going to work next season. I just, I don't understand the direction this team is going. So th- from from what I, I can surmise, first of all, if you don't remember the context, last year going into the Belgian Grand Prix, it was announced that Otmar Safnauer, who's one of the more popular team principals on the grid, um, was basically like, you're fired, dot, 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 after this weekend. And it looks like Bruno Famine is going to undergo the same treatment from Alpine, where it's, you're fired, but you still have to work for the next three days, which is awkward and hilarious. But what I think this is all about is this is all about Alpine has brought on Flavio Briatore, who had been banned from Formula One and unbanned from Formula One because rules don't exist and this that and that was all related to crash gate when um, fernando alonso's teammate um nelson pk jr crashed on was was told by briatore to crash on purpose allegedly so that alonso could win the um singapore grand prix but it looks like this is all briatore is kind of taking charge of the team and trying to dig them out of the hole that they're in by letting Esteban Ocon go, changing, you know, changing things up at the team principal role. But it's it's really just a big old heaping hot mess. And who knows what is actually going to come of this next restructure again. Yeah, I just I think it's going to be like an annual spa weekend. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just like Not in a positive sense, but a negative one. Every spa, we're just going to get a new, you know, fired and interim team principal who turns into the, the real one and then they fire him again. And you know, it's just an annual event. Time is a flat circle. Seriously. But on a, like, 
shockingly positive shockingly note. positive and almost encouraging note alpine has a fun festive livery this weekend so if you like go back last year it was announced that a investment group purchased a large portion of alpine part of that investment group is ryan reynolds ryan reynolds is currently in and releasing and promoting Deadpool and Wolverine. And so this weekend, Alpine's livery is the Deadpool and Wolverine livery. And it's actually really cool, actually really good, so much better than their normal livery. So, you know, golf clap to the thousand people that approved this one because the thousand people who approved the last one don't know what you're looking at. But also it proves, in my opinion, that they know how to make a good livery and they gave us this terrible livery on purpose. So I'm going to pause you on that. Okay. I don't know if I fully believe that. I think what happened was Ryan Reynolds and his team were like, hey, this is your livery. And they're like, oh, yes, a good livery. We will accept. I don't think anyone on Alpine's team actually had anything to do with this one. And it was a third party and it was just kicked over to Alpine and like, put this on your car. That that could very well be correct because like this livery is actually really nice and actually covers the car and you can actually see what car it is and also kind of looks like an Alfa Romeo livery from last year, but that is neither here nor there. Um, it still looks pretty cool. It's very in with the movie. I hope like they the the drivers will be wearing custom race suits. Um, Akon has another custom Deadpool helmet. He had one last year that I think he ended up giving to Ryan Reynolds. He did. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we've got a new new helmet. I'm sure Gasly will also have a, a special helmet for the weekend. But it looks it looks really cool. I like it. I'm 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 very happy to to see this on track. My only negative comments were this is the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, and I don't know regulations wise if this would be allowed. But it'd be so cool if one car was red and one car was yellow, and they Ooh, were racing. Yeah. But I don't know if you can change up that much of your livery car to car. I you know don't what think I mean? you can. But I, it'd be I, so I, cool. It if would you have could. been really cool. <laughs> or maybe Fully. they're full race suits. Like one is Deadpool and one is Wolverine. Like that would be cool because you can have different race suits. Yeah, they could. They. I think they could. I something. I'm. I'm pretty this sure. This is way could. too technical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 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 you can <laughs> because Max and Checo had two different race suits. Oh, and so for did, Vegas, and so did um. Oh, the god awful mistake of yes. the HP. Red Bull launch because um Charles the Ferrari. had a light or Fer Ferrari. That's what I mean. Yeah, the Ferrari. They had um one had dark blue, one had light blue. So I yeah, so yeah. you can. Oh yeah. God, Somebody if they was would saying do that, I would literally just gold medal all around. Alpine has the best livery race suits, even though they don't, but I'd still give it to them for this. I, I, people were saying that they should like go fully all out and go like full on cosplay, kind of like when um, Red Bull had their Star Wars tie in a few years, yeah. like, and by a few years ago, I mean like 20. Um, and they like they should just go balls to the wall. I agree. So we'll see. <sighs> TBD, but I'm excited to see it. So, yeah. Also, the mad, the mad professor, Mad Hatter, whatever you want to call him, he just looks like someone who would be behind beakers with like steam coming out and like a you know scientist suit jacket whatever the white coat is um lab coat. lab coat thank you and if you don't know who i'm talking about i'm talking about mattia binotto so he was the team principal at ferrari now it's fred Vasseur, but he was the previous one and he will be replacing andrea seidel at audi for when they actually become a team in 2026. This is exciting. So he's not going yeah. to be team principal, but he will be the chief operating officer and the chief technical officer, which yeah. is, so he's kind of taking a step down, but not. He's he he's basically he's he's in charge. He's from what I read, he's going to be reporting directly to the Audi board. And this is a a very significant management shakeup because Andrea Seidel left McLaren. Um, he was the team principal. He left McLaren to take over um, at Audi to ramp up the Audi move and be and was you know in charge of Sauber. And as we know, Sauber is very not good this year. No, they're so, terrible. So they so so. He was he was asked to leave, and so was another person whose name is escaping me because I've slept on the ground for the last two nights. And so now it'll be Bonato, and Bonato will be responsible for getting, first of all, for getting Sauber's nonsense together for the end of the season, because Bonato is starting on August 1st. So he's starting in like a week and a half. Um, so oh, he's I didn't gotta, realize it was that quick. 
Yeah, so he's got to get Sauber's nonsense together for the end of this season and get them on the board points-wise. And then he's also got to get them ready for the 2025 car. And, the, and then, of course, 2026 when Audi actually takes over from Sauber as an F1 team. Woof. Yeah, it's a lot. That is a lot. Yeah, and it also raises more questions of will this make Carlos more or less likely to choose Audi? Because obviously Andrea Seidel was... Carlos's team principal at McLaren when Carlos was at McLaren. Mattia Bonato was Carlos's team principal when he was driving for Ferrari before before Bonato got fired. So does this mean that Carlos wants to go back to work with Bonato? The we we did a we actually did a community poll on our YouTube channel, and the the great impression was yes, Carlos does have to to choose um, Audi now. Um, no. That's what eighty three percent of of respondents. I disagree with the community because Carlos just, was so obviously frustrated with how he ran Ferrari. So why would he voluntarily drive with him again? That's a great question. Yeah. So eighty three percent said yes. Um, eight percent said no. Bonato will go in a different direction, and eight percent said that Carlos is just going to watch the Olympics and not choose a new car for twenty twenty five. Um, Honestly, I would think that would be the eighty three percent, but whatever yeah i mean so 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 we'll see and and to to speak about the current future sauber driver who was brought on specifically to drive for audi nico hulkenberg was definitely caught off guard with with this change in leadership um from seidel to bonato so that will be interesting to see how that plays out i think it'll be fine because obviously hulk is happy that he's just still on the grid and potentially on the grid with a team that could get him on the podium after forever but i think it could be this this could be interesting can we just pause for a second? How is Nico Hulkenberg still driving? Right, like, though? He's the most, like, I don't want to say irrelevant, but he kind of is. Like, he has snuck by for so long and done nothing mm-hmm. for F1. Like, him driving for Sauber and then Audi, like, does not surprise me. Audi's German. He's German. Makes sense. The Germans like to support the Germans. 100% on board with that. But, like, he's done nothing. Yep. I don't know. He's 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 just good enough. Obviously, he has not been in a great car since his return to Formula One with Haas. He was at Renault before he kicked it up for a couple of years. Um, before they they called him back to Haas. But yeah, I mean, it it it'll be interesting. Like he's current. Like you know, there are plenty of drivers who are talented enough to be on the grid. Clearly, Hulkenberg right. is one of them. And it's like Lance Stroll. He's clearly talented enough to be on the grid, but he's clearly staying on the grid because Daddy, you know, owns his team. But yeah, you know, it's. The the other question is who else is is gonna drive instead of Hulkenberg? So we have a log jam at certain teams for like the the youth and the the upcoming you know Red Bull specifically, um, but there really are not that many drivers who are not currently in Formula One who would be cl- who would be qualified to be clamoring for an F one seat. Yeah, I guess that's true, and we don't know what's happening with Joe. But like, I would argue that Joe just needs a chance in a good car. He does. He's he been really so does. hampered by Sauber, by Alfa Romeo. Like, it's like it's really unfortunate for what may happen with him. I know. Oh, should we keep talking about the depressing news of the week? Um, let's talk about the commission meeting updates. Exactly, the depressing news of the week. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. A while back, Catherine and I talked about the potential of championship points changing. So instead of just going P1 to P10, getting points, they would actually award points from like everyone in the grid as long as you finished a race. We thought it was amazing because then you'd have serious good fighting throughout. Um, Normally, the really good fights we've kind of set are between like 8 and 15. Um, So really, you know, rewarding people for finishing And it would make things really interesting for constructors and everything like that. However, they will not change. (laughs) So that's unfortunate. I'm kind of, I'm not upset by it, but I'm sad. It's kind of like, it's it's kind of like oh that would have been cool but apparently one of the reasons that i saw for why they they aren't going to make the change is be- they basically said well everybody has scored a point so far this season except sauber so you can't say that nobody that that, that there are too many teams not getting points right. obviously the the point distribution is very weighted in the direction of the top 4 teams right now compared to like the bottom 5 um but yeah, that that was kind of their justification. Like, yeah, sure. But do I think they might extend it eventually? Probably. I think they should because, I mean, and I think we brought this up too. Say 
you're Williams, right? You have a few points. And say Sauber eventually gets a point or whatever, and they're tied. But Williams, I would say, like, Albon's consistently in, like, that 11 to 15, where Sauber's consistently at 19 and 20. Right. And so it's like, if you look at them and say they have the same amount of points, they end up at the same spot where really, truly, Williams is out driving them. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, no, fully. It, it's, I get it. But I mean, I, I just, I don't necessarily think that it's like that making another upheaval of the championship points, which is always going to be a very divisive decision from the F1 community and from the fan base. I don't think that's a battle they want to fight right now when they have so many other considerations going into the new regulation. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I accept it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Carly, yeah, so good. I mean, and then there's there's been a couple other other things, but there's one that I really want to talk about. But the first one is the minimum weight for car and driver has been increased by two whole kilograms. Um, so a driver can the the minimum is now eighty two kilograms, and the um car minimum is now eight hundred. That's about and four then, and a half pounds of increase for those of you who don't do not choose to follow the metric system. <laughs> <laughs> like me, I do not know. I I do not know that. Um, and then 2026, which is going to be the first year of the new regulation, instead of the typical um, test preseason testing period, which is just one weekend, it will now be nine days into three testing weekends. Um, but what I really want to talk about is that they have agreed to not um, accept wild card entries for rookies to get rookies more experienced driving, which is something that you and I talked about a few months ago about the, the question and, the, and I'll, I'll clip it up here was should teams be obligated to drive an F2 driver or a rookie driver in an F1 race right and now? Wait, pause, pause, pause. Pausing. When you say rookie, it's not like Ollie Behrman next year. It's like someone who currently is not in a seat. Yes. They would have to do it. Just want to yeah, yeah, yeah. clarify yeah, exactly. and differentiate so, there. Yeah. So right now the, the rule is, and I do like this rule, is that every team is obligated to give one rookie driver in their stable, so to speak, an appearance in a free practice session, free practice one. They can do more, but they, they have every driver on the grid has to give up one free practice session right. for a driver. So Max has to do it. Logan Sargent has to do it. Everyone does it. And it's an opportunity for these rookie drivers that are in F2 or that are the um, reserve driver who have not had any Formula One race experience, like a Jack Dewan from Alpine. They are, they can get in the car and they they can do that. And then the other question that, that came after Saudi Arabia, when Ali Behrman finished P7, was should teams be obligated to drive um, a rookie driver in an actual race? And yeah. the consensus was no. And the consensus is still no, because, you know, people pay hundreds, thousands of dollars to travel all over the world to watch Fernando Alonso drive in a race. They're not going to want to plan something out a year in advance to go to say Belgium and then finally get to Belgium to see their favorite driver. And oh no, it's not Fernando Alonso in the car on race day. Like that well, besides would be that, bad. even I think the bigger thing is that it would completely skew the drivers' championship and constructors. Yes. Like yes. it's just there's too many variables, and those are. Once you start messing with the institution, you it loses its value. Right. So it's like people are like, oh, well, yeah, like Max, like let's take Max out of it. So let's say, I don't know, uh, Lando. Like, yes, Lando won the, the driver's championship, but, you know, with the race that Max wasn't in and the race is here, and well, it would be abstract. You know what I mean? Right. Like it wouldn't be a true. It wouldn't be real. No, it wouldn't. It would be fake. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the, the point is, is that yet, yes, other motorsports series have wildcard entries. Obviously the F1 Academy features wildcard entries. MotoGP as one of the more, you know, established series also has a wildcard system that works for them. But I don't think F1 is the place for wildcard card entry, es no. especially if it's in replacement of a current driver. If it's adding a car to the grid, that's one thing, like what F1 Academy does. But then you still have a question of what team is going to supply the car? What manufacturer is going to supply that power unit? Like who is going to supervise the rookies and, and do that? So it really, it, it's, it's not something that within the current structure of Formula One that I think would work well and still 
still takes away from the fact that Formula 2 as an institution is not doing enough to prepare rookie drivers for Formula 1. And it's Formula 2 needs to grow it, it increase its budget, have a, a faster, more competitive car that is, you know, not completely in line with the F1 cars, but is closer to it than what we have now. And then you have a little less of that gap between what a rookie, you know, drives in F2 to what they're seeing, which is completely different in F1. Right. This is not an F1 problem. It's an F2 problem. Exactly. Yeah. That, that is fundamentally the, the issue. Yes. Okay. Do we have yeah. anything else to add about the commission meeting updates i don't think so i think that's it there there were a couple more things mostly about like paternity leave and how that's not a factor in the cost cap but like cool okay okay i mean the cask the cost cap will increase at some point yeah um because it, it it has to like it's it'll it will hamper all of the teams if it doesn't but that's that wasn't a, a question right now but yeah there, there were there were a couple other things but nothing as significant as the championship points all right, now we're going to talk about probably the dumbest thing we've ever talked about on this podcast. Oh my God. Yes. I would like to refer to it as Simgate. Yes. Um, so people have brought up how Max stays up late and Sim races and how it's like becoming a distraction and blah, 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 blah. Basically, the media blowing something so stupid and harmless. Completely. Way out of proportion. If we look back a few weeks ago, Max participated, not a few weeks, maybe months, time. Imola. Imola, thank you. Um, Max participated in a 24-hour sim race event while racing at Imola. Was not a distraction. Everything was fine. No one said anything. In fact, people were like, this is so impressive that you can do this. And now it's, oh, well, Max didn't win, so his sim racing is getting in the way. And now yeah. he's been, you know, slapped on the hand and is no longer allowed to sim race late at night on race his, weekends his, his real father helmet marco has told him that he has to be in bed by 11 p.m so no, it, there's no stupid sp- it's this so stupid so it's, dumb. it's so blown out of proportion but basically they're just capitulating to the media to ask the media to stop fucking talking about this by saying yes he's not going to do 24 hour sim races in the middle of race weekends anymore but well, but you know, i also love whatever. how helmet was like well you know it wasn't he wasn't supposed to, but someone on his t- on his sim racing team was sick, so he had to step in. And I'm like, I just love how like casually Max Verstappen is stepping in to replace somebody because like he wasn't even in the starting lineup or yeah. whatever. But uh anyways. It, it's then- all absurd. But I also want to point out that of all things also being completely bro- blown out of proportion by the media is Max taking a 10 place grid penalty for oh, this I weekend because he's taking a new um, internal combustion unit. He's, you know, he's changing out his power unit. He's over the limit, but we knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Like this is not, this is like it's the way that it's been, the, the way that it's been framed of like severe grid penalty. No, a severe grid penalty was when Pierre Gasly replaced basically his entire car and his starting position technically was in France at the <laughs> British Grand Prix. Like that's a severe grid penalty. I Whereas the penalty was like him starting next year for the British Grand Prix. Exactly. Or like starting a lot, la- like, like starting, you know, on the other side of the, the English channel. Like that's like, that is a severe penalty. 10 right. places. And like, this is, this is the third time in the last three years that Max has, has taken a grid penalty at Spa. Yeah. Um, and obviously, yes, there's more risk in it now because he's not in the fastest car on the grid, but Honestly, it's Spa. He has experience moving up the grid in Spa. It's really not as big of a deal as the media is making it out to be. And also with the way that Red Bull has been having these car issues right now, you know, Max was using the new setup last week. Checo was using the old setup. You know, I don't really, as the Red Bull fan of the podcast, I do not expect Max to charge through the field and beat everybody and win this race. I don't think that Red Bull is going to figure out their lives until after the summer break. So this is actually the perfect time for him to take this new engine and these new components so that they can really focus on finding ways to figure out what's going on for the Red Bull and be successful going into the more important part of the season, which is after the summer break. Agreed. Also, I just want to throw this out there so you only have so many replacement parts for your car for the year right right you get two power units three uh i don't it's either two or three it's one of the i know it's i know it's not more than that but everyone every season takes a penalty for too many power units so it's like yeah 
why don't we just increase the number? I know it's probably like environment, whatever. It, but it's, it's like, but this, I was thinking about this. It doesn't when, make it fair, I think, is the issue. It's like when, when Reno was like, can we have more power units because our power units suck? So we, we should give them more to then make up for the fact that we suck and that everybody said, LOL, no, you just need to stop sucking. Which, um, but like if every single driver ends up taking a 10 place grid penalty, like wouldn't you think they would have to reassess and be like, oh, you know what? We're going through these like um, power units faster. So why don't we give everybody another one? You know what I mean? I think, I think the idea is it's part of the strategy. Like part of it means that you're going to have to take a penalty at some point this season. So it's just and, a known then. It's like, hey, it's yeah. known we're all going to take one. Let's figure out when we want to take this penalty. Exactly. And right now the point is, is that the media is overblowing it because the Red Bull is not the fastest car on the track right now. And so that's why everybody's being dramatic about Max having to take a penalty when most of the top drivers are going to be taking penalties at some point this season. Yeah. If not all of them. <sighs> and it doesn't matter. It's just weird because it, essentially it's like, okay, you're starting the season already with penalties. You know what I mean? Do you understand yeah. what I'm trying to say though? Yeah, yeah, I do. And I, I, I think that it really is geared toward more of it being like, this is a part of the strategy that you have to deal with going into the latter half of the season to make the latter half of the season just as excited as the first half. Yeah. We'll see. Anyway. TBD. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing too. We have weather. We do have weather. We have weather. So let's start kind of talking about spa a little bit. Spa is probably my, I, I don't want to say favorite because I truly don't think I have a favorite, but this is one of my top three races. Yeah. Favorites. This this is this is one of the best tracks racing environments on the calendar. Yes. Um, such a good racing environment. It really so is. So good. We generally always have weather at some point in the weekend, which makes things super interesting. We do have weather this weekend on Friday and Saturday, specifically, and this really something to watch out for around qualifying on Saturday during that time, it's like 80% downpour um, or raining, I guess, which will make it qualifying really interesting for the race on Sunday. Yeah. Um, but weather aside, there are such good, like, just racing opportunities, let's say, right. on this circuit. I love spa. Yeah, it's, it's a great track. It's one of the longest on the calendar. Yes. So you have a lot of really different racing. It is a low downforce track. So you're going to be seeing a lot of really skinny rear wings. Like we're going back to that, all of the low downforce configurations on these cars. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting. And we also had some mixed up um, grids uh, or mix, mixed up podiums last year. So last mm -hmm. year, which also I totally forgot last year, Spa was a sprint race. And we were talking the other week about why is Spa a sprint race in 25. <sighs> Honestly, yeah, totally I saw forgot. the same thing, and we were we've been shit talking it, and I was like, "Oh wait, it was a sprint it was, last yeah. year." Yeah, I'm still shit talking it because I think it's dumb. Because I think that a fourteen, a fifteen lap sprint race, which was a fourteen lap sprint race, um, is kind of pointless, and it has to be that short because. All, all a sprint race is, is a hun is a hundred kilometers. Yep. And on a track like spot, that's 15 laps or 14 after the aborted start. But the sprint podium was Max Oscar Piastri, Pierre Gasly. Um, and then the Grand Prix podium was Max Sergio Perez and Charles Leclerc. So we have a very different mix of drivers in the mix this year compared to last year. So I'm really curious to see what we're going to see out of the podium this season. I think it's going to be mixed. I think it's going to be a cluster fluff just because qualifying is going to be a nightmare with weather. Yeah, exactly. And that, that will, you know, also lead to bigger challenges. Obviously, the best Max can qualify for is P10. Um, based so that on was going to be people. my question for you. How do you view that with penalties? Like, if he does get provisional pole but then takes a penalty, would you say he gets pole or would you say he did not? Um, I think... <sighs> I think he does get pole and then And I don't care. I just mean specifically for our predictions. <laughs> for our predictions, if he ends Q3 with the fastest time, then I say we get the point. Gavel it down. Yeah. Sold. <laughs> On my desk. Um, do we want to dive into predictions then? I think we can. Because we're there. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. So if you are new to the podcast or forget, Catherine and I do predictions on pole, podium, and P10. We, this season, have also started awarding ourselves points so we don't have our, you know, random throws just for the fun of it. 
So for your poll, what uh, who do you have? Uh, um, for this I weekend? am. I'm going. Well, it's gonna rain, isn't it? Yeah. I know. Mm. I'm not, Catherine. I'm so not confident in I'm any not of my confident. predictions. I'm not confident in these predictions. I also did these predictions like two seconds before we started recording, and there's the the fact that my brain is fried from, from the hike. But we're going with it, um, and I'm probably going to regret this, but I'm going with Lando because Lando is in the faster car, but Lando doesn't tend to qualify well in rain. So I am doing a risk, but I'm sticking with my pick and going with Lando. Yeah. So I also have Lando. I think he's like, first of all. It's going to rain and it's spa, so I really can't – I'm so uncomfortable with all of my predictions. Yeah. But I think Lando is going to really come back super strong this weekend after having to follow team orders and, you know, take the, the L. The whole mess that was McLaren. Yeah, the whole mess of McLaren. But I, I think he's going to come back with a vengeance, so – yeah, he's he's going to be like, I am doing this. I am doing this on my own merit. And I am not letting the team put Decide my myself. Place. Yeah, well, t- I'm not going to let the team put me in a situation where they're going to have to choose between me and my teammate. Right. Like, and, and there's, there's a question because like McLaren is one of those teams that insists that they don't have a number one driver. Obviously at Red Bull, you have Max and at um, McLaren, it's, no, we do. We love everybody equally. Like Ferrari, they love everybody equally, but they no, really they prefer Charles more. <laughs> um so so yeah so I really think that Lando is gonna be like I'm throwing the hammer down I'm not gonna let what anything exactly. that Oscar does impact my race 100p yeah okay so for your podium then who who do you have um I am going with another probably I I'm probably going to be wrong but I am going with Lando and then I'm going with Oscar in p2 and Max in p3 Ooh, you have Max making up some ground yeah I also think Max is gonna be driving angry so here's the thing. I am swinging for the fences on this one. Okay, let's go. I want to hear it. I'm excited. Um, so I had Lando Lewis Oscar. Okay. You know, I just I I feel like the Mercedes is really picking up ground. I don't know how they're gonna do with slow down force, but I also just don't have confidence in the Red Bull car right now. And with Max having to take the 10 place grid penalty. I just, I just don't know. I just, ugh. that's super fair. I don't think that my podium is as anywhere close to what we're going to see in reality, just based off the, the entire weekend is going to be weird. Um, but you know, I, I am blaming all of this on the hike. So this, this was all decided by hike Catherine. Once I shower after we finish recording, then I'll be normal Catherine. And after I've had my nap, um, then we'll, we'll go from there. But right now this is all hike Catherine. And this is like, I'm blaming it on in the last two weeks, I've been in like five different time zones and I still have yet to sleep a full eight hours. And you know, hopes and dreams, hopes and dreams. We'll see. Um. <laughs> and also we did say that Lando was going to win another race, his his second Formula race before the summer break. So here we are. It's Belgium. Put up or yes. shut up. Huh. Okay, so for P10, then Catherine and I select P10. It's the last grid place where you earn a point. You get one point for P10. We give ourselves three because it's turning out to be more challenging than we thought. Um, So my P10, I hate picking this person for P10 because I'm always hoping that they do better. But I have Danny. Okay. I I think that he will do another good surprise qualifying sesh. And um, yeah, I, I hope he gets a point this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to go with a little bit of optimism, too. I'm not picking Daniel because I typically jinx Daniel when I pick him for P10. So I am going to go with Alex Albon because I haven't picked him for P10 Ooh, in a while. So, I love that. you know, let, let's let's see how it goes. Love that for us. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm I'm not confident in any of our responses. No, not at that's all. That's what makes Spa so fun. Yeah. I hope, that, like, I would love to see a rando on the podium I, I really truly would love to see Fernando on the podium I know it's not gonna happen but I, I miss seeing him up there I miss picking him well well it, it's like in 2021 when George ended up on the podium in a Williams which I know that race was weird um and that race was only two laps under the safety car in driving rain conditions um but it's spa you never know what's going to happen honestly welcome to spa where dreams come true <laughs> sure <laughs> I think George cried after he he finished in P P two and of course he cried. Of course, he, I mean yes. Yeah, so that or it was cried, rain. But... It was spa. Who knows? Yes, it it was it was sweat coming down <laughs> from his balaclava. Um. Okay. So we also 
try and predict a surprise and predict who is going to do a dumb. So, Catherine, what is your surprise of the weekend? My surprise of the weekend is that Checo has a good weekend because obviously this is also put up our shut up time for Sergio Perez. And, de- you know, depending on what side of the, of, of the tracks you're on, this could be Sergio Perez's last race at Red Bull if they really decide to to be bold and, and make a make a drastic change. So my biggest surprise, and this isn't something that I think will happen, but it, it would be surprising if it does, is Checo has a good weekend. So I would like to push you a step further and challenge you. What would you say is a good weekend? Like top getting... five finish. Okay, thank you. Top five so finish. Like, if he gets to the point, that's not good enough. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm saying at minimum P five, and I'm okay. also saying pr- probably also, um, you know, qualifying within the top six. Let's let's do first three rows. Making it to Q three. <laughs> Making it to Q three. Uh, doesn't get out qualified by Logan Sargent. Yes. Okay, Um, so my, I'm going to go back to back on my surprise and dumb because they're kind of linked, if that's okay. So we all know, and we just talked at the top of the podcast about Esteban Ocon joining Haas. Yes. So I think what's going to happen this weekend is K-Mags and just Haas in general is going to have an amazing weekend, just killer. And they'll Mm -hmm. be like, oh, K-Mags, there you are. You are doing a great. Um, and my dumb is that Akon is going to DNF. <laughs> Coming off like this huge announcement and this whole hoopla around the new livery and the special helmet, like I don't know, but maybe Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are gonna be there. Would not surprise me. They've been at races before. I think it's gonna be such a big distracting weekend, and he's just gonna shit the bed and DNF. Which to be fair, you have some some grounding in that because the when when Alpine first announced the consortium that was was you know was buying in and then yeah. the first time it like Ryan Reynolds or Patrick Mahomes came they completely laid an egg yep. so like you like I'm not I, unfounded that could it is totally not unfounded and I I think you know Alpine's gonna do the dumb um they're not my dumb but they're a dumb yep okay yeah. so what's your dumb my dumb is um, I think that Ferrari is still going to continue being Ferrari. They've talked about how they're I, so. Kevin, as this we, is like three weeks in a row. You I know, else. <laughs> but he, okay. So here's here's the thing. Um, remember the concept of porpoising the the drivers bouncing in the cars. Um, that is yes. one of the many things that's going on at Ferrari right now. They don't call it porpoising because everybody's tired of hearing that word, but that, I think that's still what's going on there. Um, and basically they've come out and said that it's not going to be getting any better this weekend. So I just think that they're going to look really bad. But if you want me to pick a non-Ferrari dumb, I can pick a non-Ferrari dumb. No, and- it's fine. Just, you've been warned. This is your final warning. You're not allowed <laughs> to pick them next week. Well, fine. Because I mean, <laughs> I could, I could say that. Oh, he, no! You know what? Here's my. You want to hear my dumb? Yes. I think something is going to go down between Lance Stroll and Fernando Alonso because they had that little team order <gasps> snafu last bye, week that bye, was completely bye, bye, bye. that was completely not covered in any of the broadcast and barely covered in the media. But basically, um, and also I picked you know Fernando why? to you know pick why? P10 because for, for, Daddy Alonso Daddy. has pushed it down and he's hiding it. Daddy, That's yeah, why. Daddy, Daddy Stroll hit it from from the media, but basically, um, there there was a team orders thing, um, and Stroll was asked to give back position to Fernando, which would have given Fernando P ten and would have given me three points. Um, but he did not give the place back, and Fernando was pissed. So I think we're gonna have a little man. bit of revenge of Fernando, and it's not gonna go well for Aston Martin. So that's gonna be that's my real dumb of the weekend is Fernando and and Stroll and Aston Martin is going to be full of nonsense this weekend. Okay, I accept. And also Ferrari is going to stink it up. Yeah, you know, we haven't been talking about them in a super positive light lately, so. They haven't been giving us anything to talk about. I mean, Charles hasn't done anything and Carlos needs to tell us where he's driving next year. talk about. Sorry. <laughs> Lack of sleep. I've been up since 3 a.m. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it's going to be like repeat of CODA 2023, 2022. When Stroll and oh, Fernando. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, was that 22. 22? Yeah, that was, that was 22. 22 is a hard year for me to remember things. Um, 
Catherine, yeah. I don't remember like what I had for lunch two days ago. I can't remember <laughs> what specific races happened three years ago. I mean, so. I'm better at it, but 2022, like that middle midpoint of 2022, really hard for me to remember things. I kind of yeah. blocked some of that out for reasons. But anyway, what are your final thoughts on the Belgian Grand Prix? Final thoughts. I'm very excited. Like I've said a million and one times, and I will continue to say until the cows come home. I love spa. Very excited for this weekend. I'm really not looking forward to like my first true race back in the U.S. because it is at like five o'clock in the morning, which I don't love. It's not five, but it's really, really. I think maybe seven. I think for you, it, oh, if, if you're no, going to you know be in Denver, it it's seven. Okay, but this is what it is, Catherine. It is the fact that subdivision B of women's gymnastics at the end is at like three o'clock in the morning. So I'm literally just going to be up all night long watching gymnastics and then watching spa. But yeah, it is what it is. If I wasn't running a summer camp, I'd probably be doing that too. So you're going to have to (laughs) let me know how subdivision B goes. Um, But I am very excited for this race i mean you know i'm I, i'm i'm really looking forward to it because this is going to be the last race before the summer break and i know then we're gonna have to figure out what we're going to be talking about for three weeks that is it where is carlos driving next year um but yeah you know i will be setting my alarm clock for 5 50 and uh you know rolling over and praying that my ipad connects to the wi-fi because um, i've been having some technical issues here at oh this beautiful gosh. campus in this dorm that i've been living in for the I'm last i'm also super excited six to watch weeks. qualifying i think qualifying is going to be really good, good. Uh, unless it just gets red flagged and like it blows up and it, they don't you know but i hope the rain isn't too bad but it still like shakes things up a bit yeah i think qualifying might be delayed i think that would be one of the th- things that happens but yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited it's going to be a good race it's i i really hope it's going to be you know a little bit mixed up because you know the weather and whatever thing is going on we love a mixed um, grid it's, I, I think we're going to have a strong ending to, I mean, it's not the first half of the season anymore, just, you know, numbers wise, but for the right. first half of the season calendar wise, I think it's going to be a strong ending and I'm really excited to see what's up. Agreed. Well, up next, we will have our spa reaction episode out on Monday. Make sure you follow us on socials this weekend for the race and everything because Catherine is so good about it. Thanks. That has been our, I've never really called it the Belgian Grand Prix. I always yeah. just call it Spa, but it is the Belgian Grand Prix. Yeah. Um, this has been our Belgian Grand Prix predictions episode. Thanks for going off track with us, guys. <laughs>